Hey guys, happy Saturday. It's actually cool out today. Anyways, I wanted to share with you all some Korean, so throw it down, some Korean sunscreens that I have here that are actually all very, very similar. One I recently shared with you guys that I've been personally using for a few weeks now and really enjoying is the Banabaji Milk Thistle Repair Sunscreen, SPF 50 PA4+. I really like this. It has milk thistle, which is anti-inflammatory. Now, the other one I've talked about before is the Purito uh, Centella Green Level Unscented. This one is very similar to the Bonabaji in consistency, and I'll get to that in a moment. And then lastly is the Dear Claire's Soft, what is it called? Soft Airy UV Essence. All three of these have two ingredients as sunscreen ingredients. They have Uvenol T150 and Uvenol A+. Uvenol A+, covers UVA1 and UVA2, and then Uvenol T150 is going to be the filter that protects against UVB. Um, and I think in my video reviewing the Centella Green Level, I was always, you know, I was a little I question whether those two fil just those two filters, if that was enough, and why there weren't more UVA filters. If that was enough to really give you kind of sustained UVA protection, I honestly don't know. But suffice it to say, all three products, they use those two filters and only those two filters, and they all have an SPF of 50, which tells you how well the sunscreen's gonna protect you against a burn, and they have a PA rating, which tells you a little bit about how well they protect against UVA. They're all four plus, which is pretty high. So beyond the sunscreen ingredients, they have a really like almost lightweight, um, fast absorbing consistency. I'll just show you guys the Dear Claire's one on my face. I'm already wearing sunscreen, but I'm gonna just put some on over so you can see. Another thing about these three, there are no alcohols. So if you find that alcohols and sunscreen are really drying, um, these are not problematic. These will not be problematic for you. Um, so it just, like a dream, absorbs super quickly. So that's the Dear Claire's one. And then the Bonabaji, you guys saw me apply a full face of the other weekend, was it last weekend? Yeah, um, it goes on really similar. Comes out, you know, again, oops, white. It's almost like splashing your face with water. Sun shifted. And then the Purito one. I just find that these three, they're very, very similar in consistency. Like I can't really tell the difference too much. Some people on my Instagram commented that they found some of them, one of them was made them look oilier versus another. But I mean, to me, they, they look, feel, and go on pretty similarly. Now, Let's talk about the ingredients. The Dear Claire's one has panthenol in it, which is a skin conditioning agent. The, um, the Purita one has Centella, which is helpful for repair and healing. It's very soothing and very anti-inflammatory. It's been shown to be helpful for wound healing. And then the Bonabaji one has a milk thistle in it, which is anti-inflammatory. The Dear Claire's one, however, does have citrus oil in it, which citrus oil can have limonene in it, um, citronellol, which are fragrance ingredients. If you have fragrance allergy, that could cause a problem for you. I don't really care for citrus in sunscreens. I think it can cause problems for people. I know that cosmetic manufacturers filter out problematic compounds in those oils that would interact with UV light and cause rashes, uh, like furocumarins. But I still, it's like, why, why is citrus oil in there? I mean, I think it can cause issue for people. But I guess you could, honestly, you could make that argument about the other botanic extracts in the other two products that they too could potentially cause um, irritation. For example, the Bonabaji one has jasmine extract in it, and that can potentially have some compounds in it that are fragrance allergens. I just don't know, you know, that, that's the problem with fragrance 
you get into these nebula nebulous territories where some in botanic ingredients are soothing and anti-inflammatory. But you do have to wonder, a lot of times they, they could have fragrance allergens as part of them. Cause they're not like, it's not like they're a pure substance or anything. They are not water resistant. Uh, so if you're gonna be outdoors doing, um, you know, sweaty activity, exercising outside. If you're gonna be outdoors for a long time, I would recommend switching to a, um, to a water resistant sunscreen. You know, they're, they're nice and moisturizing. I think they're a really nice everyday moisturizer with SPF. And the Dear Claire's one is also vegan, by the way. Comment below, have you guys tried any of these? I know the Dear Claire's one is really popular and people adore the Purito ones. I personally like the Comfy Water sunblock better than this. Um, that one is a mineral sunscreen uh, that, does, that leaves hardly any cast whatsoever. It's, it's really nice for mineral sunscreens. If you have a deeper skin tone, you want to try a mineral sunscreen, try that one. It's actually pretty decent. I think it will still leave the skin looking a little on the lavender side if you have a deeper skin tone, but I think if you're medium to deep, you might be able to tell, you might be able to get along well with it. And it might be the kind of thing that's easy to cover up with makeup and you know make look better. So try that one on. It's really nice, very very gentle. My preference is the Purito uh, Comfy Block, the mineral sunscreen. My final thoughts though on the three chemical sunscreens, I think they're wonderful moisturizers that happen to have SPF, but I do question how long the protection lasts with just those two filters as opposed to other sunscreens that have multiple filters like those from La Roche-Posay. It does seem odd to me that they only use two filters when other manufacturers seem to need multiple. Yeah, I thought I would share these with you guys because they're, I know they're popular. People ask me my thoughts on them from time to time. So yeah, I personally am really enjoying the Bonabaji one. Update, I went ahead and got a little white pencil tree on Amazon to do my ballet tree, like I mentioned in last weekend's vlog, was it? So I think that will come, that might actually come this weekend. Maybe we can set it up. Yeah, I know it's really early, but I'm kind of in the mood to just go ahead and pull it out, <laughs> to be frank. I would rather I would rather just pull it out and enjoy it for two months as opposed to one. And I, in the past, I would have been like, no, it's way too early. But I don't know. This year, I feel like I'm ready. I'm ready to pull it out early. Why not enjoy it for a few extra weeks? <laughs> it's fun to look at. It takes. A, the other thing is the Christmas decorations, putting them up is a lot of effort. So to go through all that effort and then a month in adult years is like 20 seconds. <laughs> you know how they always talking about things in dog years? Well, they should talk about things in adult years. An adult year is 20 seconds. <laughs> so I just fired up the spiced white pumpkin candle from Homeworks. These are, you always see like on QVC. You guys, it smells identical to Tuscany Candles Lemon Sugar Cookie. I, I, so much so that I've been sitting here doing work on the computer and in my brain, I thought I was burning Tuscany Candle and I was like, wait a minute, this is supposed to be spiced white pumpkin. <laughs> what does a spiced white pumpkin smell like? <laughs> does it smell truly any different from a regular pumpkin? Apparently, Homeworks would have you think it smells like a lemon sugar cookie. Hey guys, what's up? I'm on my way out to run errands to go buy at Costco. I'm thinking I might get some meal prep containers. I'm kind of running low on meal prep containers. It's sort of floated in and out of my life. And I think I want to do some meal prep. I just, it's, it's more convenient to have stuff prepared, you know, especially during the week, things get chaotic. Um, and so I think I'm going to look for those and I do need to get maple syrup since I've really been on this baking bandwagon lately with the tone and up stuff. Oh my gosh, you guys, those brownies I made last weekend, <gasps> delicious. Their recipes have really been good. I want to make, they have these cranberry orange muffins. I think I'm going to make those next because I have cranberry and I think I have all the ingredients, but yeah, I've really been enjoying the recipes and I've been doing their workouts <clears throat> from the app every day and they are really good. It's just kind of fun to do a different style of workout every day because if it's, if I'm left to my own devices, when I go on YouTube, I'll just kind of do the same videos over and over again. But this is nice because it's like, for example, I did yoga this morning 
I haven't done actual yoga in a really long time. So that was nice. It was yoga with like weights and stuff. Um, I'm super loyal to Tone It Up because I used to do their videos all the time. They kind of, they don't really post them. I guess they do post a fair amount on YouTube of free content. Um, but back when they were posting more regularly a long time ago, was it back in 2014 or so? Um, I was a big fan and I would do their workouts all the time. TIU Tuesday. This week was Impetigo week. I think I saw like an unusual number of cases of Impetigo this week. Impetigo, I, had, I think I have a video on it. Well, I have a video on bleach baths and I talk about Impetigo in there. But basically it's um, a little superficial Staph aureus skin infection. It often can happen like if you have a bug bite and you scratch it. It's really common in kids, but a lot of people carry the bacteria in their nose and then they can transfer that bacteria into little cuts and things in their skin, get a little bacterial infection. And it can be treated topically with topical antibiotics. Um, you know, in certain situations, oral antibiotics would be needed, but for the most part, it's treated with topical antibiotics and it, you know, goes away. But for people who carry that staph bacteria in their nose, they frequently get reinfections of the impetigo. So you have to tell them to put the antibiotic ointment in their nose and that can help quite a bit. But yeah, I mean, just kind of a random thought. For whatever reason, I've been seeing this week, I saw several cases of impetigo. It'll be interesting to see how cold and flu season goes this year with everybody being mindful of hand hygiene and we're not like exposing ourselves to people and that's definitely going to make an impact on the cold and flu season um you know for sure i would hope people are really hand washing you know everybody emphasizes the face mask super important right i mean you're pretty much required to wear a face mask too anywhere you go. But don't forget to be washing, you need to be washing your hands as well um, frequently, which unfortunately, you know, obviously leads to dry hands. But it's definitely an important part of reducing the transmission of infectious diseases. Uh, now more than ever, but of course, cold and flu season, you know, we always emphasize that. But now, I mean, you should be doing it, you know, because of, because of the nature of the pandemic and everything. But I do have a tip, I do have a video, you guys, on tips for reducing the dryness and irritation related to frequent hand washing. So check that out if you haven't, if you're dealing with it. Um, I may revisit some of the hand care tips in a new video since we're getting into winter and people are gonna be continuing to wash their hands. But with the winter coming, the air, you know, it's gonna get dry and people are even gonna be more likely to have those issues crop up. So we may revisit those. And yeah, dry skin season is is coming up. I don't know why, I'm just kind of having a random stream of consciousness and thinking about numerous things. It's a pretty day out. Um, we're having really great weather. October is a really um, good month in Houston. October, November, it's not hot. It's very, temp you know, moderate. We don't really have like a true fall, but they're, you know, the leaves look nice. <laughs> they're not like, fall turning leaves or anything but we don't get snow here like or anything like that the temperature will drop to where it's cool one thing though that people like who live in cold in cold places like the northeast they'll laugh if we mention that it's cold because the temperature will only be like maybe in the 50s or 60s but you guys one thing it feels worse in a sense, or it feels more dra dramatic because of the humidity. It's just like damp. I don't know how to explain it. I mean, I lived in Colorado and I lived in uh, New York City. Lots of snow, very cold, long winters. But when the temperature drops here, it's a different kind of discomfort. It's almost like your feet get kind of like blocks of ice. It's drafty, it's a drafty cold. Lord, Trivectin has an eye cream duo here. Award winning eye cream. You should get a full size and a mini. $40. Targets the visible effects of blue light. Pray tell, what does this have in it? The only ingredients that can block uh, blue light are the pro-pigmenting wavelengths of blue light. 
uh, are iron oxides and large particle zinc. Neither of which this has. <laughs> it has a bunch of peptides, which I think some of these peptides uh, in industry studies have been shown to inhibit uh, tyrosinase, so maybe they can help in improving hyperpigmentation. What else does it have in it? Of course, fragrance, perfume, rice extract. I don't know. Seems like most eye creams, more problems than it's worth. Just use your regular moisturizer. That'll fight the look of dehydration and fine lines and brighten up dark under eye circles, at least temporarily. You don't need a $40 baby tub of tripeptide. Trivectin's also got their infamous neck tightening cream. This always seems to end up here. I don't recommend that. It's just a tub of overpriced perfume. Uh, what do we have here? We talked about that before. I think that had perfume in it too. Oh yeah, this is the one that's just titanium dioxide, so not as, titanium dioxide blocks some UVA, but it's not as like broad spectrum as zinc is for the UVA. No, I wouldn't rely on just that as your sunscreen. Real her, makeup that empowers. Really, that's, those are some pretty lofty promises there. Wish, natural lip balm. Coconut, watermelon, frosted pear, peach, and black cherry. Sounds tasty. <laughs> That's the problem with lip balms. They make you want to lick your lips and then that leads to lip lickers, chelitis. <laughs> Jane and Bleeker sleeper socks are $10.99. I'm tempted to get these. Oh, look how cute these are. These are new. Little happy trailer. Or RV. Oh, those are adorable. It's a good collection of ornaments too. $21.99. These are also new. These bulb pathway lights. They're cool. There they are. All lit up. You get blue, red, and green. There's a little moose again. This is new, Wusthof's Universal Knife Sharpener, $19.99. I'm a bit tempted to get this. Maybe they got new color changing tumblers. These are a lot cuter than the old ones. They have hearts on them. They have pink and blue. Two ounces, $16.99. Well, hey guys, it's much later and I'm gonna go to sleep now. Um, if you made it this far, thank you for sticking around for the whole vlog. I greatly appreciate it. I hope you all enjoyed it and I hope you're having a great Saturday. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.